This LOS is calculate and analyze the value and return of an index given its weighting method. So for this LOS, we're just going to work through a bunch of practice questions. So the first one is, an analyst gathers the following information for a market capitalization weighted index comprised of securities MNO, QRS, and XYZ. So we're given a table there with the security, the beginning of period price, the end of period price, the dividends per share, and the shares outstanding. And it's asking the price return of the index is A, negative 9.33%, B, negative 10.23%, or C, negative 13.9%. Okay, with these questions, again, as I said in a previous LOS, you have to read them very carefully because you have to read in the question what the weighting, uh, how the index is being weighted, what the method is. So this one says a market capitalization weighted index, and then we have to look at what they're asking us to calculate, whether it's the price return or total return, okay? So in this case, when you see that they're asking for the price return, we know that we don't need the dividends per share, okay? But uh, we have the beginning period of price and the ending period price. Now remember, if it was a price-weighted index and they're asking for the price return, it was easy. We would just add up the prices at the beginning of the period. We'd add up the prices at the end. Ending divided by beginning minus 1 times 100, we're, we're in business but it's not asking for a price weighted index, it's asking for the market capitalization. So do you recall how we did it? We did it in a previous LOS. What we need to do is, uh, and I put it down here in green so it can catch your eye, we need to um, look at the beginning of the period, the number of uh, shares outstanding times the price equals the market capitalization. Number of shares outstanding times the market price, market capitalization, number of shares uh, outstanding times the price, and we're gonna have our market capitalization for the beginning of the period. And then uh, what we simply do is we calculate uh, for the end of the period as well. This is the end of period price times the number of shares outstanding. And here is the um, end of period price times the number of shares outstanding, 7,500 in this case. So I won't bring up my calculator and do all these, but you can see, uh, you know, in a 90 second question, this is just a bunch of quick little calculations that you have to make. And for this one, it's times uh, 10,000 shares outstanding. So uh, then you're going to sum up the end of period. And then it's just ending minus beginning divided by the beginning. So in this case, you could see that the correct answer is B. The price return of the index is negative 10.23%. So a nice little reminder on calculating a market capitalization weighted index to calculate the price return. We look at the market capitalization at the beginning of the period. We look at the market capitalization at the end of the period, and then it's ending minus beginning divided by beginning, okay? These, uh, as I said, these get easier. You just have to practice them a lot and be uh, speed is a skill, skill gets rewarded. When they're giving you a question, you have to read the question uh, quickly, look at the data that's given to you, throw out the data that you don't need, do your calculations uh, efficiently without any keystroke errors, and uh, you'll be in good shape. To another practice question. So an analyst gathers the following information for a market capitalization weighted index comprised of securities MNO, QRS, and XYZ. Hey, that looks familiar. Uh, yeah, they're giving us the exact same data. But in this case, they're asking us for the total return of the index. Is the total return A, 1.4%, B, negative 5.35%, or C, negative 10.23%? Okay, this is a nice little question, and it's one that uh, sometimes people make a bit of a mistake on. So what do we need to do here? We need to look at, uh, they're giving us the beginning of period price, they're giving us the ending period price, and they're giving us the dividends per share and the shares outstanding, okay? So there's quite a few calculations that we need to make uh, on this to do the uh, question correctly. So first of all, because it says market capitalization weighted index, we need the beginning of the period value and we need the end of the period value, and then we need the dividends, okay? So again, if we look at MNO, I'll just, I will bring up the calculator now and do this question a little bit slow, more slowly. Just move it to the other side here. And you can see, uh, so the beginning of the period is 2,500 times uh, 5,000 shares. So we have a market capitalization, 12,500,000, okay? For QRS, it's 3,500 is the beginning price. It's in yen times uh, 7,500 shares. 
And we've got our market capitalization, 26250000 And then finally, for the last one, don't even need the calculator. Beginning price, 1500 times 10,000 shares outstanding, 15 million. We add it up, it's the 53750000 okay? Then for the ending value, we're gonna do the same thing. We've got our ending prices here, and we're gonna multiply by our number of shares. So I won't bring up the calculator for that. We'll just take our word for it that the calculation is done right. But 2,700 times 5,000 is 13,500,000. 2,500 times 7,500, 18,750,000. Uh, and again, don't need the calculator here, 1,600 uh, yen times 10,000 shares, 16 million. So you add it up, okay? Now here's the little bit extra because this is looking for total return and it's on the market capitalization. So you need to calculate all the dividends, okay? So I'm gonna bring up my calculator again. So you can see here, you have to do the number of shares times the dividends. The first one, I don't even need my calculator. 5,000 times 100 is gonna be 500,000, okay? Second one, I'll bring up the calculator. It's uh, 7,500 shares times by 150 yen for the dividend. And you can see 1,125,000. Last one, don't need my calculator as well. It's 100 yen times 10,000 shares, 1 million, okay? So this is the next key thing. How do I calculate the total return when it's market capitalization? Again, I'm gonna do ending for the market capitalization minus the beginning plus those dividends. So that's why I put it here on the bottom it's gonna be the ending minus the beginning um, uh, plus the dividends divided by the beginning, okay? So that's gonna be uh, 48 to, uh, 48,250,000 minus the 53,750, okay? Plus the dividends and gonna divide by the 53, okay? So I wrote it up here just to save space. You can see 48,250,000 minus 53,750,000 plus the dividends divided by the beginning gives you negative 5.35%. The funny one here, I often look at, oh, why, why are they giving you some other numbers, some other choices here? What could be a mistake that someone made? Well, where does that 1.04 come from? Once you've calculated the total return, see we calculated here the total return of the individual securities, Someone might take time uh, uh, calculating the total return of the individual securities, and if they thought, oh, I'm gonna add those up, you know, uh, 12 uh, minus uh, 24.29, and I'm gonna add 13.33. Uh, uh, oh yeah, the correct answer is 1.04. That's that, that must be, that's what I need to do. I need to uh, calculate the total return of each uh, security and add them up. No, that's wrong. So you can see that's clearly wrong, and that's why that's a mistake that someone might uh, might, might make. Uh, what you need to do for the market capitalization to calculate the total return, again, it's just ending minus beginning plus the dividends divided by the beginning, and we're adding them all up. We're going to add up the market capitalization at the beginning, add up the market capitalization at the ending, and add up all the dividends, okay? Nice little question that takes a little bit of practice and don't fall into some of the traps. You just have to know exactly uh, how, to, how I work through the calculations. That's why I put it there bold and green, okay? Okay, another quick question. This one says an analyst gathers the following data for a valuated index, uh, three securities, A, B, and C, price at the beginning of period, end of period price, number of shares doesn't change. So for security A, beginning price, 20 pounds, 300 shares, ending price, 22 pounds. For B, uh, beginning price 50 pounds, 300 shares, ending price 48 pounds. And for security C, beginning price 26 pounds, end of period price 30 pounds, 2,000 shares. The return on the valuated index over the one period is A, 7.1%, B, 11%, or C, 21.4%. Okay, I think this question is really easy. Remember we saw in a previous LOS when they talked about value weighted, that is the market capitalization weighted, okay? Uh, it's just, it's the same thing, two different words for the same thing. So don't get, free, uh, uh, you know, confused by when you're seeing it asking for the valuated. We did see that in the previous LOS. And when it's market capitalization, to calculate the return, it's just that this question is just asking for the return. All we need to do is multiply the price times the number of shares. Uh, so 20 times 300, 6,000. 
50 times three, uh, 50 times 300, 15,000. 26 times 2,000 is 52,000 added up. So there's my beginning period. Uh, market capitalization, that's the market cap, number of shares outstanding times the price. End of period, I'm gonna do the same thing. 22 times 300, 6,600. 48 times 300, 14,400. 30 times 2,000 equals 60,000. There's my ending market capitalization. So here I just did the calculation. It's ending divided by beginning, minus one times 100, 10.96. So it's uh, closest to 11%, okay, B. So that should be an easy one. The only trick there is you just have to remember that valuated index is the same as the market capitalization. And so you're just calculating the market capitalization. Quick question with no math. Which of the following index weighting methods requires an adjustment to the divisor after a stock split? A, price weighting, B, fundamental weighting, or C, market capitalization weighting. That one's pretty easy if you've been doing your homework. A is correct. In the price weighting method, the divisor must be adjusted, so the index value immediately after the split is the same as the index value immediately before the split. Okay, here's a nice little question, and on the CFA continuum, this is a little bit of a harder question, but this is, uh, brings up the point that the more questions you do, the more practice, the more times you see different types of questions, the easier it gets, okay? Uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So I might not get this question the first time, but if I uh, see it again, I'm probably going to get it the second time, okay? So this is uh, definitely a very tricky one unless you've seen it before. Uh, once you've seen it, 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 it uh, becomes all right. So let's go through this. It's a price-weighted index series is composed of the following three stocks. You've got stock X, stock Y, stock Z. They're giving you the number of shares outstanding before a stock split, and they're giving you the market price before the split on day one. Uh, $10 for X, $20 for Y, $60 for Z. And they have the market price after the split on uh, day one, uh, $12 for X, um, $19 for Y and $22 for Z. So it says that stock Z, if stock Z completes a three for one stock split at the end of day one, the value of the index after the split at the end of day one is closest to A, 29.9, B, 31.7, or C, 32.3. Okay, this is one of these questions where once you've seen it, actually the math is not too difficult. You just have to walk through it and understand it. So the first thing is that um, uh, they've given you some red herring information. We don't need the number of shares outstanding before the stock split. Uh, typical to the CFA, they give you some data that you don't need and people start doing all kinds of calculations going down the wrong track. What you do need is you need the uh, level uh, of the index uh, the value of the index before the stock split. So how do we do that? There's three stocks, one, two, and three, and it's price weighted. We're gonna add up the prices of the stock and divide by the number of stocks. So before the stock split, we have 60 plus 20 plus 10. I can do that in my head. I don't even need to bring the calculator up. 60 plus 20 plus 10, uh, that's 90. And 90 divided by three is gonna give us 30, okay? So we have the value of the index um, at, uh, before the stock split. Now this is the interesting thing, um, and this is the little trick. So you can see the market value of uh, price before the stock split for Z is $60, and it's a three for one, okay? You're gonna get three shares for every one share that you had. So you need to divide that 60, divide by three, and you're gonna have 20 is gonna be the value uh, now the price went up a little bit, that's fine. Sometimes prices rise, there's more liquidity, more demand was created. But what the little trick with this is that you had to take that uh, stock price before the 60, divide it by three and get your 20 to come up with the new divisor. You see, this is the little trick. So that's why I put it here in green. The 10 plus 20 plus 60 divided by three equals 30. Now I've got 10 plus 20 plus 20 divided by X equals 30. So I'm just gonna bring up the calculator. So just gonna bring up the calculator. You can see the 30 because that previous one we said we have to adjust the divisor so that the level of the index is the same. Now the price changes. That's why this is a little bit of a tricky question. Uh, you know, a bit of a curveball because um, you know, the market price after split, you know, day one, it, it, would, it, it, it would originally be 20 and then you know, some trading happened and the price went up to 22 and that's not very clear in the question. But nevertheless, if we bring up the calculator, 10 plus uh, 20, plus uh, 20, okay, 
uh, that's going to give us 50. So that's going to be 50 divided by x equals 30. So 30x equals 50. So I'm just going to bring up the calculator and that's just 50 divided by 30. And so now we have a new divisor of, we've rounded it 1.67, 1.666, okay? So then to get our uh, level of the index after the split is easy because now we're putting in that 22, the actual 22. So it's 12 plus 19 plus 22 divided by the 1.67 and you've got the uh, correct answer is B. This is one where I've said many times, when in doubt, guess B. <laughs> a lot of times it seems to be B. Anyhow, that's uh, from the section on the probabilities. You've got a one in three chance of getting the question right if you're uh, just guessing. So again, not, the math is not difficult. You just have to work your way through the steps on that. And sometimes the questions are not as exactly as clear as you'd like them to be, which can create a little bit of confusion. Well, that's a nice little, uh, fairly difficult, uh, tricky little question to practice. Okay. And we're down to one last practice question for this LOS. So a market index only contains the following three securities. Security X, beginning of period price per share is 100, market cap in a millions is uh, 100 million. Uh, security Y, has got a beginning of uh, period share price of 200, and the market cap in millions is 150. And Security Z has a beginning price of 110, market cap of 300. What approach to indexing will most likely give Security X a weighting of 18%? A, price weighted, B, equal weighted, or C, market capitalization weighted? I really like this question because again, it just puts a little spin on it. We're so used to calculating, you know, the return, the return or the value of the index. And then this just gives us a little bit of a spin saying, which approach to indexing uh, most likely gives us a weight of 18%? Well, let's uh, cross out the ones uh, that are very easy to solve. It's not going to be the equal weighting. Let's bring up the calculator. There's three securities. So one divided by three is going to be a weighting of 33.3%. So that's got to be wrong, okay? Equal weighting is uh, uh, everything's got an equal weight. So uh, an equal weight would be 33.3% for each one. That's got to be wrong, okay? Let's go to the next one, the price one, which is easy to calculate. Again, how do we do the price weighting? Uh, we're going to look at, we're, first of all, we're going to add up the prices. So 100 plus 200 plus 110. Just bring up the calculator. Don't even read, need the calculator for that. But anyhow, 100 plus 200 plus 110. Uh, sorry, 110. And that gives us uh, 410, okay? And we're looking for security X. So that's going to be 100 divided by 410 in terms of the weighting. We saw that in a previous LOA, uh, how we calculate that. So 100 divided by 410, and that's going to give us a weighting of 24.4%. No, that's not right. So again, uh, this isn't, uh, so uh, A is wrong. So if A is wrong and B is wrong, it's got to equal C, and I haven't even done the calculation. So that should be able to be, uh, to do that in quicker than 90 seconds, okay? Now, in terms of the market capitalization, we're going to just do the same thing very quickly just to prove it to you if you want. We're going to do, we're going to add up the capitalizations, 100 plus 150, and they've given it to us, uh, plus the 300. So that's a total market capitalization of 550. And um, security, again, we're looking for security X. Always check and double check. So we're looking for security X, which is 100 divided by 550, and we have the correct answer, 18.1818, which is closest to 18%, okay? And that's the last slide for this LOS, thank you.